Hey guys, welcome to the 90th. Yes, we are nine away after this um, to 100, but welcome to the 90th edition of the Animated Girls Profile Confidential. And the title basically says it best who we're talking about. We're talking about Eric W. Schwartz, iconic character herself from the mid-90s. She grew up with the internet. We're talking about Sabrina. Now, you might say to yourself, why is Sabrina qualified for this? Well, believe it or not, just like some of his other um, animated characters, Eric W. Schwartz actually did not one, not two, but I believe three um, animated shorts, possibly just two. I think he had a third in the, third in the works before he uh, stopped doing them. But he actually did two animated shorts with Sabrina. One... Um, basically is a very popular one done in the early to mid 2000s called Remote Possibilities and the other is called Plight of the Artist which was the first one he did around the mid to late 90s and they and for the three minutes three and a half minutes that they're on four minutes if you will they're actually pretty they're actually pretty funny they're actually very funny, very amusing. Uh, basically, the synopsis for each are this. Uh, for a plot of the artist, uh, Sabrina working on her Amiga computer, and this again tells you the time frame when he did these because the Amiga computers were still the bulky computers, just like the, you know, the Dells and the Apple computers and stuff like that, and the Microsoft computers. It was big and bulky. Uh, she has to use what's known as a Goliath power supply to turn it on and use it because she's going to be painting um, a mural on there, basically a mural of mountains and all that. But anyway, long story short, long story short, uh, Sabrina has an issue that causes her to lose her work and she has to start all over again. She's, you know, she gets frustrated. She screams, but you know, she just sighs and it's like, oh, well, well, better, well, might as well start over, and you know, try to finish it this time. In other words, basically, learn from her mistakes. Just start over, learn from her mistakes. And then the other one, Remote Possibilities, is a very funny one in its own right because Sabrina is falling asleep on the on the chair while she's watching uh, some television. She's just flicking through the channels and she's you know starting to fall asleep and when it looks like she just suddenly wakes up, all of a sudden she tries to switch a channel and instead of switching the channel to let's say who framed Roger Rabbit with Jessica Rabbit she instead turns herself into Jessica Rabbit and then starts to have, and then sees and notices what's happened and starts to have fun with it. And she just starts changing herself into different things and all that. And basically it ends with her waking up and realizing that it was a dream. But Sabrina became such an iconic character, not just with those two animated shorts and possibly a third one that was in the works, but she became very popular due to the fact that she has a webcomic series that's continuing even to this day. Now, originally the way the webcomic series was presented from the mid-90s up to currently, um, if you will, or not currently, but about, what, two years ago, two, three years ago, was it was basically a stripped kind of... Uh, comic, kind of like what you see in a newspaper with the comics in there. It was basically a strip, a comic strip. That's all it was. Just one, pa just one comic strip uh, per week or per month or something like that. Or per a few weeks, whatever. And it wasn't until about a year or two ago that Eric W. Schwartz decided that he was going to abandon that and go the full page route, the full comic book page route for the series. In other words, it wasn't just a comic strip anymore. It was a full comic book page uh, presentation. 
And in addition to this, he also created a Patreon page. He actually has two. One for his more risky adult artwork, if you will. But the other for um, Sabrina. And basically, if you have Patreon for at least a dollar on both of them, I believe, you can get early access to uh, the comic strip when it comes out before, you know, days before um, he uploads it to uh, the Sabrina-Online.com site. So you get early access to it, you know, if you have, if you're a Patreon supporter of Eric's. But yeah, Sabrina is, you know, like I say, became very iconic. The series, uh, even Bob's show, Bob's show, uh, Rob Thomas, and his girlfriend, uh, fiance, or girlfriend, if you will, Raven, of Raven Fox Audio. They are fans of Sabrina and Zigzag and all the characters related. And they just can't get enough of it. And they've enjoyed it. And they love the direction that it's going in, just like a lot of people do. In fact, Media Hunter Isaac did a review on the Sabrina series, and he kind of enjoyed it. Others have talked about Sabrina, but I'm surprised, unless I guess it gets Patreoned, I'm surprised Lynn Cara hasn't talked about it yet, because I'm assuring you this, I'm assuring you this, once he does, he'll probably get a kick out of it himself. He'll probably enjoy it himself. So... Again, I'm kind of surprised he didn't tackle it yet, but maybe bef- maybe in 2021 he'll do it. Because, hey, if 2020 has proven anything, you know, the 2020s are going to be a, ye- a decade of the unexpected. So, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if maybe he does um, end up reviewing Sabrina down the line. Because there's two, if not, actually there's three volumes that Eric released onto, um, onto actual, you know, released onto actual hardcover books. Or actually published into hardcover books. One, the first one chronicles the first nine to ten years. And then the second one chronicles the next nine to ten years. And then the third one, which is called Baby Steps, chronicles the entire pregnancy that Sabrina is going through before giving birth to, the, to her and R.C.'s daughter, uh, Danielle. So, yeah, the three books that he has released that contain stories that you can find on the Sabrina-Online.com website. But, yeah, Sabrina, she's a funny... But Sabrina, overall, as a character, she is funny. She um, is relatable in some ways. Uh, You know, she has gone through a lot, I'll tell you that. I mean, there are some moments that were actually pretty dark for the series that I think a lot of people were surprised Eric W. Schwartz went down with Sabrina. Um, But thankfully recovered from that and went back to the more comedic routes, you know, with her. And there are moments that have been, you know, tender and nice, you know, accomplished, very accomplishing moments, accomplishing moments, easy for me to say, uh, accomplishing moments. There have been moments to where, you know, again, she's been kind of humbled, she's kind of been embarrassed, humiliated, even if by her own accord. And again, there have been some moments of happiness, like like I said, her marriage to R.C., the birth of her daughter Danielle, stuff like that. And again, like I said, she's had her moments, both good and bad and embarrassing. In fact, one that's embarrassing in the eyes of a lot of people is, again, in the early portion of the book, um, it's around... I'm guessing, I'll have to look at it, but basically it's a little after Sabrina gets hired on at Double Z Studios as a computer technician, programmer, whatever, and ZigZag, who's the boss and one of the stars there, takes a liking to Sabrina, and pretty much there's a moment, and it's very iconic, where Sabrina basically lets it be known, hey, I don't know what you're thinking, but I'm not that kind of a girl, and ZigZag is totally fine with it because they have a little bit of a situation, which they do touch upon towards the end of the recent Skunk's Day Out uh, story, 
Well, Zigzag, you know, comes to an understanding after that little confrontation of, oh, okay, I get it. Maybe I was, you know, pushing it a little too hard. Maybe I was coming on a little too strong. You know, I didn't realize. Basically, Zigzag shows understanding that, hey, maybe not everybody is willing to, you know, get to, you know, you know, hit me up or take my offer of getting it on. And... What's interesting, though, and how this ties into one of Sabrina's embarrassing moments is the fact that Zigzag, you know, is willing to sleep on the cot. You know, hotels bring cots and all that just in case it's extra beds. And she's willing to sleep on there by herself, but she can't because she's always used to snuggling up to somebody. So what she does, because Sabrina is in such a deep sleep, she thinks to herself, okay, we have an understanding now, we're, we're cool, we're friends, I get it, you know, but maybe she won't mind if I just snuggle up and that's it, nothing else. And you would think, okay, that's fine, share a bed together, nothing happens, even if you have to you know, hold each other, whatever, nothing happens, that's cool. How this ties into an embarrassing moment for Sabrina is she's dreaming about making out with RC in bed. And, you know, but you know how they exaggerate in cartoons? And I don't know if this happens in real life. But you know how they exaggerate in cartoons and, and maybe even live action how someone will dream and suddenly they'll just start moving around while they're dreaming, thinking they're doing something. Well, Sabrina is put into that scenario to where she's thinking she's making out with R.C. in bed. And when she leans in for a kiss on him, what she's actually doing is kissing Zigzag. And Zigzag has to wake her up, says... Sabrina, wake up. Who? Are you, what are you doing? It's like, she has to be the one to get Sabrina to wake up and kind of like realize what she, and make her realize what she's doing. And Sabrina looks at, you know, wakes up in shock, sees what's happened, and is like totally embarrassed. She's like, oh, crud. You know, so. <laughs> Again, it's one of the, one of her own humiliating, if not embarrassing moments that she, you know, puts on herself. It's at her own hands. Hands and everything. But, again, so these are the kind of moments and scenarios and stories that make Sabrina such a very popular character in the eyes of a lot of fans. And I'm sure, like a lot of fans, I'm surprised that no studio, animated studio, yet has picked up on giving this girl a series. This character, Sabrina, and the characters associated, they need a series. They need an animated series. And I think, again, I've said this before, I think Netflix, Amazon Prime, Hulu, you know, maybe even Apple Plus TV, HBO Max, they are the kind of, pl they are the kind of uh, services that I believe would take a show like you know, would take on, take on the idea of distributing and showcasing an animated series based on the Sabrina webcomics. I mean, if you want a good example of Netflix doing that, check out Kibo. Kibo recently did it, and Kibo was based on a webcomic. But yeah, anyway, overall, Sabrina is a kind of character that you can really get behind, root for, laugh at, you know... Uh, relate to, feel happy for, stuff like that. So, in the end, guys, I highly recommend, if you have not read these comics yet, go to sabrina-online.com and read these comics. You will enjoy them. You will enjoy them. If not, go to Amazon Prime, pick up the books. You will enjoy them there just as much. But that's all I can say for this 90th 90th edition of the Animated Girls Profile Confidential. We are nine away. Nine away from 100. Who will be next in the in this series? We will find out. But until next time, guys, take care. God bless. I am out.